if you wanted to. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Hello. Happy New Year. Welcome to BCC. Is this anybody's first semester? Don't be shy. Congratulations. First time Welcome. First time students. All right. Um, before we get started today with Congressman Frank, um, we, I've asked a few of my special friends to join us today um, who will introduce themselves and tell you a little bit, little bit about why and how they are related to the Constitution and some of its amendments, after which I'll ask our distinguished, distinguished, not extinguished, <laughs> <laughs> our distinguished Chief Academic Officer Sarah Garrett to um, introduce the president and then our main speaker. Um, without further ado, each of these folks will have their 30 seconds of fame. Um, you guys can choose your order and I'll let you go. Good morning everyone. I am Ben Franklin and I'm here to tell you a couple of things. One, what I'm not. See, Ben Franklin, unfortunately, is noted for so many things that had so little to do with the Constitution. We all know him as an inventor. We knew he was big into electricity. He had the kite and the key. And he actually almost got electrocuted twice. One time when he was trying to actually cook a turkey with an electric shot. Um, and that's a true story. Um, we also know he's, on, he's the only non-president to be on our currency. He's on the $100 bill. But those are minor compared to his contributions to the Constitution. And in fact, I believe he was proud that he was the only non-president uh, to sign all four major documents that uh, lent itself to the birth of our nation the Treaty of France, the Anglo-Franco Treaty, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution. The only signed non-president to sign all four of those important documents. He was tireless in his efforts to bring about the Constitution. He was a representative from the delegation from Pennsylvania. And when the first proposal was put forth for the Constitution, there were competing proposals put forward also. And thankfully, the delegation from Connecticut was able to bring those all together into one compromise. And throughout that whole hot summer, they labored inside the building, secretly in the dark, because they kept the windows shut, even though it was 90 and 100 degrees. The windows were shut day and night as they labored over this compromise uh, constitution, or what would ultimately become the constitution. And finally, at the end of it, when it was all completed on September 17th, it was Ben Franklin who noted that outside the window he saw the sun. And because they didn't know what time of day or even what day it was, because they literally were locked in, he couldn't tell initially if the sun was rising or setting. But once the final signature was on the document, or once the final words were put to the document, he said he knew that this was a great day for the nation and truly the sun was rising. And those are his contributions. Thank you. The U.S. Constitution is our blueprint, our instruction manual. Though short, it clearly sets the parameters for our three branches of government, the legislative, judicial, and executive. I'm here today as a member of the United States Secret Service. The Secret Service was established in 1865 solely to suppress the counterfeiting of U.S. currency. Today, the agency is mandated by Congress to carry out dual missions, protection of, protection of national and foreign visitors and leaders, and criminal investigations. Most of you know the Secret Service because we are charged with protecting the President of the United States. Because the President is our nationally elected leader, our job is very important. The Constitution is important, too. Did you know the Constitution mentions the line of presidential succession in three places? I'm only going to talk about one, don't worry. <laughs> Article 2, Section 1, Clause 6, makes the Vice President the first in line of succession and allows Congress to provide by law for cases in which neither the President nor Vice President can serve. The current law governs the succession of the President for succession. 1947. This gives us a list for president. Obviously, the president is second. Anybody know who the third person is? <laughs> We're going to test you, actually. Yeah, my, my boss. That's right. That's right. The speaker of the House. Uh, number four is the president pro tempore of the Senate. That's the ranking um, party member in the Senate. Um, number five, anyone? Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. And I'm just going to go down the, la the, the rest now. Uh, Department of the Treasury, Secretary of Treasury, rather, Secretary of Defense, Attorney General, and then a bunch of uh, secretaries for different departments, Interior, Agriculture, Commerce, Labor, Health and Human Services, Housing and Urban Development, Transportation, Energy, Education, Veterans Affairs, and Homeland Security. 
here's the question for Congressman Frank. Do you know how that list is created? Why that order is? Yeah, in order of the department's creation statutorily. Thank you very much. Good morning. I am, of course, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States. And when I was a young boy growing up in Kentucky, I actually revered the founding fathers, Ben Franklin and George Washington, and often would read uh, by the fire the uh, early works of, uh, about George Washington's life and tried to emulate that in so many ways. My great political hero was Henry Clay, uh, someone also who uh, represented Kentucky in the United States Congress. And I, of course, became President of the United States, the 16th President of the United States. And I hold one great, well, many great distinctions, but one great distinction is that I was the tallest American president, six feet, four inches tall, which would be, in your day and age, about six feet 10, six feet 11. So I would have been probably a power forward or center on the subject. Um, but in terms of my relationship to the US Constitution, obviously, when I came to the presidency, it was a dire time in American history. We were divided north versus south. The institution of slavery, of course, was the key issue that divided us among many other issues. And my chief responsibility as chief executive was to make sure that the laws were faithfully enforced throughout the entire union. And I worked tirelessly during my four years as president to make sure that the, the Constitution and these states were preserved. The unity of the United States was essential. I also was instrumental in helping to finally eradicate the in the United States of slavery that eventually became the 13th Amendment, uh, which was ratified, unfortunately, after my death because I did not have the Secret Service agents with me in April of 1865 at Ford's Theater. Who knew? 